Yeah. Let me share again. Reshare. Can you still see my desktop? I see rocks and rocks. ocean. That's the desktop. All right, good deal. And I am recording, I believe. Yep. All right, welcome everyone. I'll make this bigger. So I give it one second here. As I said, our topic tonight is WordPress for nonprofits. Um, like I said, we felt there's a, a lot in this, and we, we have people attending who are part of nonprofits, but hopefully, even if you're not part of a nonprofit or actively working on one, you'll, you'll still get some good information out of this. Uh, real quick agenda, we'll, we'll do some introductions between Peter and myself, and then we'll take turns going through some of these topics. So we'll, Peter will cover developing websites for nonprofits, um, kind of how is it different than developing a normal website or an, a regular for-profit website. Uh, I'll mention some WordPress plugin recommendations. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about other considerations, including accessibility. Peter will cover that. Um, some non-WordPress software. So even though we're talking WordPress, there's obviously other things around WordPress that could be of benefit to a nonprofit. Um, I'll talk about, you know, after you launch your site, maintaining your site. So I know that's always a challenge with some nonprofits. So we'll give you some ideas and suggestions for that. And then we'll wrap it up with some final thoughts. Real quick about myself, if, uh, as I said, if you're here for the first time, welcome. Um, I'm one of the, the co-organizers of this group. Uh, I've been in software development for 25-ish years as a, a developer. I worked for some large enterprise corporations. Um, from, and I've been using WordPress probably, at least probably four plus five years right now. Um, from a nonprofit standpoint, just you can read the rest of the stuff here, but where I got into this was as I was working at um, United Health Group was really my last employer. One of the nice things that they did was they offered us volunteer time. So we could, we could work a certain number of hours, I think it was per month or so, where we can charge that time to different volunteer projects. And that's how I found out about volunteering. And that was really one of my first experiences of using WordPress beyond just playing with it for myself. You know, like I, I built little WordPress sites um, on my own, but finally getting a chance to apply those skills and use it for a real live site. Uh, my first one was uh, a couple of nonprofits. So that was, that was my experience in it um, probably six years ago, somewhere around there. So anyway, um, that's me. And let me toss it over to Peter. Hi, um, I'm Peter Ingersoll. I live in South Windsor. Um, Sorry about that. I don't, hey, can you hear a background noise? I'm just a curious. Bit. A little bit. A little bit. Okay, good. I just, anyway, uh, I live in a house that I'm close to my furnace, so I apologize for that. But uh, I've been using WordPress for almost countless years now, it seems, um, but I'm self-taught in everything. So um, in terms of, you know, uh, hardcore developer, I'm much more somebody who's a, a marketing and communication person who use, uses WordPress, um, discovered WordPress and uses it as a, as a tool. Um, so I've learned, I've been self-taught, so I like to share with others. And that's, I think, indicative of a lot of people in the, in the WordPress community. As far as nonprofits, yeah, one of my, my first opportunity after I left corporate, um, and I think my opportunity to come through the fact that um, the, the, the people I know are, tend to be people who are like, you know, more engaged in nonprofit type organizations and a teacher with a school system got me involved in an education uh, group. And then from there, it's working with education, um, a, uh, the, the Esphere Slobokina uh, Foundation, and she, she's the artist and author of Cats for Sale, if anybody remembers that from way back when. And, and also, I work with that foundation. Um, community health um, is, a, is a big part of, you know, who I work with. And also, um, yeah, nonprofits are, are probably where I, I, I do most of my work and probably, honestly, the work I enjoy the most. These are yours. Yep. So I think, you know, we're, we're getting into this, this idea of um, developing websites for nonprofits. Yeah, it's about WordPress, but there's a few uh, kind of points I think we should, we should talk about that apply to just websites in general, um, nonprofits in general, but also, and, and we'll talk about it, is nonprofits aren't all that different than businesses, and, and there's a lot of crossover, so this applies to, to a lot of folks. So, um, 
for a nonprofit and for businesses, you know, there's a whole question about even web, why, why a website in the first place. It may, to a lot of people, it may seem, um, you know, like an obvious choice, but I've, I've worked with a lot of people that you know they, Facebook, uh, social media, that's, that's where they focus their efforts, but your website is your home base for all your communications. Um, it, is, it is the place that you have ownership of, you own the content, um, you manage that content yourself, you are not relying on the social media platforms um, that can change the way they, they do things. And, and in fact, there's a, a lot that's happened with Facebook recently where, um, and recently over the last year or two, where businesses had to change completely because they focus so much on one thing and Facebook changed what they do. Um, you know, your, your, your home base website is a great place for reference material and, and, and resources, great interactivity where you can really, you, you know that that's your point where you can, you can do a lot more than just a lot of the awareness that might happen in social media and, and things like that. Um, and building the website out is, it, it, you know, the requirements, what you have grows as you grow or, you know, you can phase into things. So there's a, there's a lot of great opportunities um, in building a website for a nonprofit. On the next slide. Um, so like any business, when, we're, when we work with businesses too, you know, there's a whole discussion about what are you, what are you trying to do, right? So, you know, nonprofits have to um, think and act like a for-profit business in a lot of ways. Of course, they have a lot of other things that, that they're involved in. Um, but those, those uh, the, the, the mission, the vision, the values, especially for a nonprofit are not just words. I think, you know, I've worked for some large corporations where the kind of were just words, you know, when you went to the mission statement, but for a nonprofit, that mission statement is incredibly important, especially because you're, you're going to communicate that uh, um, to your audience because you're looking for their support very often, or, you know, that you're validating that if they've supported you, that you're, that you're doing the work, um, you know, for those, those people. And it's, it's based on the mission. Why do you exist as a nonprofit in the first place? Um, you know, knowing your goals, your stakeholders and how success is measured is, is vital to just saying, are, am I, are we doing the right thing and are we operating uh, properly? And, um, and then, you know, understand the rules and requirements of the organization of what it means to be a nonprofit and all. All these are important things uh, to know um, as you're developing. So, you know, what are your goals and who are your stakeholders? You know, um, your goals are, are is it, is it funding and donations? Um, are you trying to just increase uh, participation? Are you recruiting, recruiting volunteers, um, uh, a, a workforce? I, I work with AmeriCares where they're bringing uh, people in to, to, they're actually getting in these paid programs and it's to get involved in these different things. Their recruitment is a big part of what they're trying to do. You know, proving and communicating the good work that you do. When you, you know, nonprofits, there's a lot of events that happen, making sure that those um, events that there's participation for them, that overall awareness, um, you know, the stakeholders, the board, what does the board need and want when they have their meetings and how are we supporting them and, and what, you know, they need to do? Um, do, you, do you have uh, partners and, you know, what are the expectations of those partner relationships? Uh, Legislative support, you know, when I work with organizations where the state legislator, le legislature is very important to it. So making sure that the website reinforces what they're trying to do and all, it's all very important. So knowing that that's a stakeholder in what's being communicated is important. Grant requirements, if you are a nonprofit that, um, you know, uh, gets a grant and that grant may have specific requirements, you have to know what those are because you have to know what you can and sometimes can't do um, in your communication programs and on your website. Um, so uh, bottom line is, you know, you have to, how do you measure success and achieve your mission? So that's, that's a, that's a big part of, of knowing and making sure that all the, all the people who are working with your website, if it's more than you, um, you know, are aware of these types of things. So you're kind of all on the same page. So then we move in, you know, well, why, is web uh, why is WordPress a good choice? Um, and one of the, the big things that a lot of people say, well, there's a huge helpful support, support community. And it's, in a lot of cases, you could say it's attuned 
to nonprofits. Um, a lot of the people who are contributing to the WordPress open source environment are giving of their time. Um, and, you know, Ray and I are right right now in a lot of cases, right? So it takes work to do this, but we want to do it. We're, we're, we're uh, giving and sharing in that. And a lot of the people in the WordPress uh, community are, are similar. Um, and if you say you're on Facebook and you go to one of the, the, the um, Facebook groups specific to WordPress or a specific plugin or theme on WordPress, or whatever, you, you can get a lot of help and support from people who are just trying to help, which is, which is great, especially when you, you know, your resources may be limited. Um, so that, that support community is great uh, all in itself. Um, you know, there's low startup costs. I mean, technically you could even start for nothing depending on what platform and what you're, you know, you're, you can, um, you know, limit yourself to, if you will. Um, but there's limitless potential on how much you can grow that website on this platform, um, which is great. So, you know, getting started and then adding to it and scaling up are all, you know, great aspects of WordPress. Um, so, you have, you know, it should be complete, uh, not compete, although there's competition too, but complete ownership of the site and the contents is, is again, very important. You know, you, that's the site that you're developing on WordPress is yours. It is transferable if you need to move it to a different uh, web hosting company, for example. Um, it's packageable. Um, you know, if you want to make changes to the way the environment works, it's yours to work on, which is, which is great. You don't get that even in, you know, other web platforms that, that may be available, you know, they, there's a lot more limitations. Um, it's fully customizable and scalable, um, kind of addresses a, those, the, the two bullet points um, previously mentioned. Um, the plugin environment, the ability to add functionality um, is huge um, and add that functionality as you need it. It's great. You know, you don't have to start with the, the final um, product as you need new functionality. WordPress is a great place where all the work that you've done, you, you are still, you're building upon as opposed to having to start over, for example. Um, integrated online giving options for, for nonprofits is, is very, is very valuable. There's a lot of ways of connecting um, WordPress to a, uh, a function for giving and actually taking payments or, you know, otherwise interacting with people where, you know, you can, you can manage that. You can take payments in through, through the site connected to payment gateways, that type of thing. So that's a great uh, capability. Um, and there's easy onboarding boarding of other contributors. And especially if you have volunteers, you know, it, it's, and it, and that you can share, you can get other developers involved as you need to. So you have flexibility in terms of who's working on your site and how that support works. So that's, that's a, that's a great option uh, as you have like, you know, changing personnel and all. So now we're just, I'm going to talk about, you know, kind of best practices, key elements. Um, you know, these are uh, a, a, a hodgepodge of uh, website, WordPress, communication, um, but they're all things to consider as you're as you're looking at your websites. So Why to everybody? I think who's who's on this who's on this call. Uh, you know, the focus on the user experience is, is huge, and it's especially huge, I think, for nonprofits. You know that that uh, being aware of who your audience is from the from the previous slide, and being able to really make sure that you are engaging. Um, with that user kind of every step is so important. Um, mobile first, mobile first um, is, is so important and WordPress is a great platform for mobile first, you know, responsive technology where your, you know, your website that you're developing and your desktop works on your phone. But now where mobile first is so important is even, you know, Google, Google is now indexing sites based on that mobile experience. But also for nonprofits and the ones that I that I work with too is just knowing that a lot of the uh, audience won't even have a desktop computer. You know, they're they're using their phones um, for all of their internet interaction. Um, so it's so very very important an important thing to keep in mind. But at the same time, please don't neglect the desktop. I see I see websites that I use a desktop all day and I go to it and it's like. Um, 
it's not a good experience for the desktop user. So, you know, WordPress is great for being able to serve both with, um, you know, a, a, a relatively minimal amount of, of, of work on either side, especially when you work with themes and plugins that really are, are geared for the, both the mobile and the, and the desktop environment. Um, making it easy, making it easy to contribute, to volunteer, to inquire, to engage, to find the material that's, that somebody might be looking for. Um, so very important. At the same time, avoid overcreating. Um, I look at this, sometimes I'll, I'll see, like if I'm looking at a website and, and trying to help somebody out, I will find websites that have been um, over created and, and things added and bolted on. And it's because it's relatively easy to do, it's also relatively easy to have things kind of get out of hand. So be careful what you put there because that's all affecting that user experience. Um, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Peter, can I jump in just for one second? I, I wish anybody could. Yeah. Especially on at least my experience, and I'm, I'm, obviously there's folks on here too who have a more direct experience running nonprofits, but one of the challenges of designing a good website for a nonprofit is that first thing about the user experience, because as Peter was mentioning earlier, you know, if your your users are really multiple stakeholders, so, you know, it's it's very different trying to build a good experience for, let's say, and that's where you, you have to do like, you know, back in my corporate development days, so you have to do some kind of use cases and say, all right, the volunteer. So the volunteer basically wants to get the quick information of, you know, how do I volunteer? How do I fill out a form to volunteer? All that kind of stuff. Whereas the donor, maybe their experience is more, I want to find out what this organization is doing. So, you know, going back to some commercial or for-profit businesses, for-profit businesses, a lot of times you have the idea of the landing page and a single call to action. It can be difficult in a nonprofit because the call to action does differ depending on, you know, who, who your user is. So it's, I think that's a challenging thing I've found from working on some nonprofit sites. Yeah. But I think a good point there, Ray, is um, knowing how you're going to measure success. And if um, getting donations is your top goal, then that'll give you an idea of where that lands in terms of, you know, and what you'll often find on, on, on a, a nonprofit site that in that top menu across the top, right in the top right is the button for donate. Um, always there, easy to find. Um, so that's knowing your audience and then, you know, knowing what your goals are. You know, um, Again, the best practice. So an attractive, compelling homepage, as much as that sounds like, you know, well, sure, of course, but it's important. And um, one of the things that I found with nonprofits is that there, there can often be a tendency to try to overpack a lot of things on that homepage, try to get everything in there. And then because of, you know, um, it may have been launched in 2008, the infamous 2008 web development time where, you know, everything got packed in and then added to and bolted on and bolted on. And all of a sudden you're, you're looking at a website that you're like, I don't know what I'm looking at. So look at that, you know, making that, that homepage. Okay. I know what this, what this is about. I'm comfortably being here. And now I might drill down where I need to, or taking advantage on the mobile phone, you know, what I'm going to scroll down to Sure, You know, you can have a lot on a homepage, but organized and, and uh, compelling in such a way. Um, we kind of were just talking about, you know, um, the, the call to action, you know, that button, what, do you, what, what are those things that you want people to do and making sure that we don't. And yeah, this is probably one of the bigger challenges. You know, we don't want to have the donate, join, subscribe, volunteer buttons all in a row and say, you pick the one, you know, it's, what are you trying to do? Or where does that call to action best land for where that, that um, site visitor, you know, is, is going and looking for more information and all. But when they are ready to act, are we making it as clear and, and, and uh, easy and useful and, you know, frictionless is a word that gets used, but I, I look at it more, there's a, there's a comfort level that you're looking for where uh, I I'm most frustrated when I click on something where I think one thing is going to happen and then something else happens. And then I'm like, you know, maybe I'm out of here and you didn't convert because of that. Um, I think well-maintained uh, news updates and blog posts are important for nonprofits. If you're, if you're the kind of nonprofit that is active and doing things, um, which most nonprofits I would say are, um, it can be frustrating sometimes even as a user to go to that site and say, oh, they haven't updated 
you know, their, their news and blogging, you know, since 2018. And it's then it's like, well, how do I know what they're doing? So it's something to pay attention to. WordPress is a great environment for making that easy and easy to organize and easy to present. Then of course, you know, doing it is its own challenge. Um, event calendars and event registration. Um, uh, and we'll probably talk about this a little bit later, but on the website, sure. Yes, face, Facebook has some, there are some great uh, event tools out there, you know, but as long as we're making it easy for people to find, here's what's happening and then what do I do to become, you know, to, to register. And you can have people register more than one place if it makes sense. But, you know, that it is, again, it's that ability to find the information. Okay, here's something I want to do. How do I do it? Um, that goes along with the, the contact forms, inquiry, mail, phone. You know, how do I, how do I um, contact you? And, and making that as easy, easy as possible, clear, um, workable. Um, so that's when you're looking at, for example, you know, are you using a form plugin? Are, you know, and, you know, how are you designing it? Do you have a contact page? Is your phone number right at the top? Because you know what, we have a, a phone system that's manned or the email. You know, you also have to know what are you, you know, how are you best able to respond to people making inquiries? And you might put one thing forward uh, over another um, based on that. Um, and then, uh, you know, the About Us page for nonprofit, which can even, you know, bleed onto that homepage, but that mission, the vision, uh, the values, who the board is, all, all, the, all the things that are, that are um, you know, much more important for a nonprofit than I think, you know, a, a for-profit or corporate business where, you know, it's about the product and buying the price. Um, for a nonprofit making, you know, here's what we do and here's who's doing it. Having the pictures of the staff, if that's the, you know, if that works for you, um, that's, that's all valuable ways of really connecting with your audience. Anyone else want to jump in on that one or? No. All right. Next slide. So, you know, what else can we, can we do um, with the website? You know, complementing your, your, your campaign. So a lot of times, uh, you know, for the, some of the larger nonprofits that I work with, you know, you might have a group of people that, that have some kind of campaign that they're doing. Make sure that, you know, there's, there's what, what they might be doing, say, in social media, that you do have an element on, on, on the website. Having continuity between these things are very, very important. I, 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 think, uh, I, I think sometimes... Um, there's a fail that happens when say you run a campaign and then you link back to your homepage and then there's no connection to the thing that you're talking about on, on, in social media, for example, linking to the right thing. And again, WordPress makes that easy. If you, if you build a page over it and you have that link over in social media, if you're using featured images and all, a lot of that stuff happens kind of automatically, um, which is great. Um, so, you know, working in tandem with your social media uh, efforts, WordPress is, it's a great uh, platform for doing that. Um, compelling video and photography. It's kind of even like, you know, when I mentioned the, the, the staff photos, but there's, a, there's adding a, a genuine nature to what you're doing. Um, and that's kind of my last statement on here, but that, that, you know, real people doing real things is, is important. You know, stock photography has its place. And in some cases it's, it's absolutely appropriate for nonprofits, but when it's possible to have photography and video that is from the people and from the heart, I think that's it, it, proven to be uh, far more valuable than even overproduced videos I've seen where it's like, that's great. But, you know, w when it's the real people talking about what they're doing and the pride that they take in what they're doing, then there's a lot of value to that. Um, and then, you know, building your email list, I want to make sure that we, I, I know that's a very vital part of that and you know having that we just we did a whole session on uh, email lists i think it was our last one right um that uh you know that's that's a key element um for the site oh and just as i'm jumped to the be be genuine you know having content that is optimized for readability it's great for the user experience it's also great for search engine optimization so kind of keeping in mind the best practices for business nonprofits they all kind of tie together so a lot of times when we talk about this, and these are full two-hour meetup sessions that, that we've done that we'll do again and all, but when we talk about things like themes and plugins, um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's a huge topic. And, and that whole idea of trying to find the perfect nonprofit theme or, you know, uh, something so specific, there's a lot of ways of going ab about it. But for me, one of the things I, I, I say to start with or to regularly do even is, you know, look to other websites for inspiration. You know, who's doing it right? Um, that's the, one of the best ways to kind of, you know, move forward and you, you emulate what you see. And if it works for you, it's going to work for other people. Or if you have other people look at what to say, hey, do you like this versus that? You know, there's a lot of good work being done and, you know, um, getting inspiration, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I personally encourage it. Um, I will say know. one caveat on that. Which is, yeah. I have run into though people who's, let's say, there's, there's the inspiration, but then there's also being realistic too. So I, I have worked with some nonprofits who are like, oh, I want our thing to look like the whatever, the American Red Cross, you know, American right. Red Cross website. And you're like, you're not the American Red Cross. So hey, they, have, they have yeah. a team of web developers and photographers, especially like you said, the ones where it's like a you know, beautiful video and all that. You're like, okay, you're a local nonprofit down the street. Maybe someday you'll be there, but right. you know, crank it down. So yeah. I'm, no, that, 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 that is a great point. Um, you know, I, I didn't put it in here, but that whole idea of do, doing a reality check every once in a while, know what your resources are. You know, um, a lot of cases when you, with, with, with the nonprofits that I'm working with, finding the time to do something is, is, is a, a challenge all in itself. So to think about doing something that is at, at a level where there's a heck of a lot more resources, you know, it's more of like, well, what can you glean from that, from that site? You know, what, what is it? Maybe it's just the way they organized a few things, you know, those are the types of things that you can look at and see and, and see, okay, this is effective because they have a clear message. They have what the next steps to do, you know, that type of thing, I think are, 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 are good ways to go. Um, so in that case, when I look at WordPress, you know, the whole, the whole um, topic of themes itself, for, I'm sure I've said this on, uh, on several other meetups, but, you know, I'm definitely somebody who looks for themes that are, are more adaptable to a wide variety of things, because then you're not almost undoing a lot of the things that you might get in a theme that is very specific to something. Um, but at the same time, what, what I, th I found that's been really good is a theme that gives you that flexibility that, but that might also, what are now called starter sites. So starter sites are mm -hmm. a way of taking a theme and then importing, you know, a number of sample pages and even sample home pages of the content that says, you know what, this gets me much further down the road. It looks good, it focuses on what we are, and maybe if there's time later, I can show you a couple examples of that. But that's a good option. Starter sites are a good option for, um, Getting a theme that gives you flexibility and then have, have that theme, and Astra, Cadence, Generate uh, Press, which are my three favorite themes, you know, they all have starter sites um, that allow you to get to a certain point. And now with where uh, the block editor is and um, the, the, the block collections that you can now group things together and, you know, kind of bolt different pieces together, again, is all meant to be give you both flexibility and kind of a more rapid development uh, environment. Um, as far as plugins, you know, it, it's the best practice for any WordPress site, you know, use only the plugins that you need, look at high quality, but there are definitely plugins that are specific to nonprofits. We're gonna talk about a very few out of the whole environment, um, but there's definitely um, a way of finding, you know, looking at, what's popular, what's supported, what's considered high quality, um, you know, a good installation base, uh, a lot of support, those plugins that might have a free version and a pro version, and you can say, hey, does that follow a path that I might follow, that type of thing. So there's a lot of ways of looking at these high quality plugins that meet the needs of nonprofits specifically. That's a perfect segue into my part. <laughs> And, and, and as Peter was saying to me, these plugins I'm going to talk about here, it's not an exhaustive list of plugin recommendations for nonprofits, but that's where I think, you know, going back to the community part of it really helps out. 
you know, it's reaching out to others in the WordPress space because there are a lot of people in the WordPress space who who's either work directly on nonprofit websites or part of the nonprofit community. So, you know, ask people if, if you have a problem or you're trying to implement something, you know, reach out and say, hey, I'm a nonprofit for this. You know, yeah. what's a recommendation? Because I, I think you get a lot of a lot of honest advice as, as well as recommendations. So. These are just a few we're going to talk about for some common problems, I'd say, um, that nonprofits face. Uh, but again, it's they're not the, the only ones and it's not an exhaustive list. Hey, so, Ray, can I just check yeah, one sure. thing? Were there any questions on yeah. what what that kind of intro and sort of general WordPress and website, any, any feedback questions? Yeah. Peter, it's Brian. I had a question on not related to the nonprofit, uh, profit aspect, but just in general, it occurs to me that you've mentioned about finding a few favorite themes and sticking with them uh, yep. as a rule of thumb, and I, I like that approach. Is there a way to figure out, you know, analytically what what theme a site is using? Uh, yes. And if it's a WordPress theme, for that matter, I yeah. Mean, how can you? Well, the the easiest answer is to use the WP Theme Detector website. That's the one I use. I don't know, Ray. Do you use another one? I use built with is the other one. Built with theme detector is good if you want to also know the plugins in in a nice way. That's um, true. So this is one. The other thing, if you're if you're like me and you're you're also lazy, you can right click usually on a site and if you go to inspect. Yeah. If you look at sources, you can tell it has the telltale fingerprints of, of WordPress here. <laughs> yeah. Got it. But, but Ray, if you wouldn't mind, if you went to WP Theme Detector, and the only reason is because I think this touches a little bit on that inspiration and, and all, and, and you know, Brian has a good question. Um, but if you put that, and then, you know, if you're brave enough to put in your own website, uh, or so what this does is it will read this, if it's not a WordPress site, um, the theme detector, and there's one other site that's like this, like it, it escapes me right now. Um, it'll tell you, first of all, if, if it's not a WordPress site, it'll say, sorry, this is not a WordPress site. But if it is, it will come back hopefully uh, soon. It, yeah, it takes, takes a minute. But it will tell you um, what, here we go, uh, what theme. In this case, it's saying, it's showing your theme, and then is it saying a child of? Yeah, it's nice. So it's give these my main yep. theme, and then yeah, I have a child theme on here. Yep. And then plugins, let's see, events. Yep, so here's all the plugins we're going to talk about. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, that's nice. You're right. This shows it a lot more because the built with one, I like that because it actually tells you more. It, it, I'm not sure if this one does as well. That'll tell you like the server technology. Yeah. Things like that. yeah. It's more tactical for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. So, um, and feel free to interrupt anytime too. Certainly, like I, I know I put folks on on mute, but jump in. We're, we're definitely would like your questions as we're going through this. Um, so, as I said, this is not an exhaustive list of plugins, but one that I'd say a lot of nonprofits need is some way to take in donations. And, and there's different ways to do this. You know, real, real low tech is um, you know putting a, a PayPal button on, on your site. And I've, I've done that for some clients because that's all they need. You know, they, they don't need something fancy and they have PayPal already. So we just, you know, add a button to their site. But if you want to go a little bit beyond that, and again, the nice thing about uh, WordPress is you have the ability to plug things in. And if you find something better, you can, you can swap that out later. One that's really popular in the, the WordPress, in the nonprofit space, I should say, is Give and Give WP is its official name. So what's, what I really like about this plugin, and I've used it, and I'll show a quick demo on it in a second, is just the free version alone gives you probably 90% of what you want for, for most nonprofits. Uh, they do have a premium version, additional add-ons to it. So if you, you know, if you have some requirements that go beyond the free version, you can, you can use that. But it's amazing what you get for free. Um, one nice thing about it is it, it's because it's really well used and very popular in the nonprofit space. It has great support. It integrates well with most of the popular payment gateways, you know, PayPal, Stripe, etc. Um, as I said, it has a really rich set of features, even for the free version, and it's gotten a lot better too over time. This is one of those plugins that I think I first saw a couple of years ago, and it was it was fine then, but now they've made the user interface, I think even better, like they've made it so much easier to use the back end, the front end looks more modern over time. 
Um, and here's something too, a lot of plugins maybe will just give you the, you know, the ability to take in donations, but they don't have that, that back end reporting built in. So this, this has some great features like that too, that, you know, you can just go to single dashboard, I'll show you in a second and, and see, um, you know, what donations came in. So I set up my goofy little demo site here. I've been using this for a couple of our, our meetups. And I threw this really simple, almost no customization to this together. So this is a, a donate page and this is um, using give WP. So there's different ways you can do this. You don't have to do it in this style, but I did the style of, you know, having a goal. So let's say we want to raise $10,000 for a charity. It'll tell you how much is raised, you know, how many people have donated. You can change, you can change all of this, you know, change your picture, et cetera. So let's say I go, the nice thing, here's another thing too, from people who've worked on uh, other nonprofits. It, it's nice to have the big buttons and you can arrange the order of these anywhere as opposed to just leaving a blank screen. Cause you know, most people with a blank screen are gonna put in, you know, some perhaps some lower amount. So th this is a nice feature. And this, again, this, you can change all these amounts to whatever you want, it doesn't have to be this. And then in the end, I'll just do myself just for test. Oh, there we go. And it's in test mode. That's another nice thing too. So you can test this without even hooking it up to a payment gateway at the end. And as soon as I hit donate, it'll give me a nice, again, customizable thank you screen. You can share this on Twitter, share it on Facebook, et cetera. I get, I won't show you here, but I get an email as the person who donated. You can send these the emails, the confirmation emails to multiple people. So you can use that as your receipt. So that's the front end experience I think is, is really fantastic. And they, they've changed this quite a bit. Um, and it's customizable. This is just one view. There's other ones you can do that you don't have to set a goal like I did. But let me show you real quick on the back end of this. Yeah, this is give WP. On the back end, you have the, the it'll show up on your, your sidebar as donations. Uh, and you'll have a couple, one thing here is reports. So reports will show you, you know, here's the donations I got today. So one donor for $50, that was me, average donation, et cetera. And this is all free out of the box, the, the free version of it. So, you know, it probably won't replace, if you have a, a, a better back end donor management system, it, it's not gonna replace that. But a lot of people have nothing. So this is much better than nothing. It's better than just tracking donations in a spreadsheet or, you know, kind of manually. Um, so there, it comes with a lot of great info. A, a lot of this stuff besides, you know, having the ability to just kind of cut and paste this, this information, share it with your board and other people. Um, you also have the ability to extract all this too. So as Peter was saying, you know, the nice thing about WordPress versus a closed environment like Facebook is some of those closed environments make it difficult to get your data out. Well, this one, uh, I think it's under tools. I have to remember exactly where, where the feature is. Yeah, you can export everything. You know, export your donors into a list, export you know, whatever columns you want. So very flexible, you know, really flexible thing. Looks good. And again, the, the price is right. So that's, that's a highly recommended plugin for donations is Give, Give WP. And when you, the other bonus too, I was talking to Peter about it this morning is once you sign up, this is one of the few ones I, you know, not few, one of the few things like when you sign up and it sometimes asks you, do you want to receive news about, you know, our product? Say yes, because these guys are really in the nonprofit space. They give you a ton of great tips. Um, their, their emails I, I found very useful about, you know, not even just their plugin, but just, you know, yep. donations in general, give you some ideas about how to run a, a donation campaign around the holidays or around COVID, et cetera. Just, you know, really good advice you get for free again. Yeah. Uh, real quick, um, one of their, her, Michelle Frechette, who you'll find on their page, she is, her title's Head of Customer Success, but she is very visible in the WordPress community. And it's just an example of, again, why, you know, WordPress, I think, works so well with nonprofits. So here she is, she works with Give, she talks about it, but she's volunteering her time for uh, organizing meetups, word camps. She's on all kinds of podcasts, you know, just, you know, she, she has her own podcast. So it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. And now you have that genuine. So the person who is, who, who is one of the faces of give is somebody that you can go listen to a podcast and see in all, all these other formats and see on zoom, you know, meetups and go, these are real people doing real things. And I, I think that that speaks volumes right there. All right. So this one's like, a, there's other options out there for donations, but I'd say if you're going to start with, with something, 
definitely start with Give. It, it's another one, like Peter said earlier too, that it, it starts off easy. So you can use it as very simple, just like what I showed, but then it can also get a lot more complex later too. So it has that flexibility in it. Um, events was another thing that we had mentioned earlier too. I won't spend a lot of time on this. Hopefully people have, um, have seen the events calendar. There's other ones out there. This is the one I, I've used the most and, and certainly recommend. Very similar to, uh, to Give in that it has a, a free version, which it has a ton of features, just the free version. And then you can do premium add-ons uh, afterwards. So for example, one, one add-on that I've seen um, another nonprofit use was for ticket sales. So back, back in the old days, you, you know, if you wanted to sell tickets in person, there was a connection to that uh, through, through their paid add-on. So I'll show this real quick, the events calendar again. Um, this, and this is another one too. This isn't really not, this is not specific to nonprofits. So if you have a regular website for whatever reason you wanna uh, create events, advertise events, uh, the events calendar is wonderful for that. So this isn't one specific to nonprofits, but, um, you know, I created a, just a, a dummy event here. So um, it creates a summary page for you if you want it. So I just have the, you know, going to the default URL of slash events. You can change this to be whatever you want. You can change all these views too. So this is completely default view right now. You know, you can say, I want it listed as a month view or a day view, et cetera, or a list view. Um, for each of these, you can make it like a featured event, et cetera. It, Basically on the back end, these are custom post types. So if you're familiar with custom post types, you know, you have a featured image, you have a summary here, et cetera. And this is all configurable as well. And then finally, if you go into it, now I'm onto the, the detail page or the, the post page itself. So um, again, the cool thing about it is it's a custom post type for events. So you don't have to create your own event custom post type, but it has all these really neat features like um, you know, the ability to add things to Google, uh, your calendar, you know, so people visiting can, can add this to their Google calendar. I don't have this hooked up to the, um, the Google Maps API because now it's, they make you pay for it. <laughs> but you can hook it up to the Maps API. You can see, you know, a, a map version of this, or you can turn this off too. So highly flexible, really easy to use, uh, very popular outside of the nonprofit space. Mm -hmm. Really strong user community on this one too. So again, this is one if you run into issues, you know, there's plenty of support available for it. Uh, one quick comment on this, right? Yep. Is um, on on the back. It's a custom post type, but on the back end you have um, venue and organizer um, things that you can add to it, which are great, especially if you have partners and people that you're working with and all, because now you're. You, you can uh, present their events or make sure that, you know, an organizer or another organization is, um, you know, getting their credit in the nonprofit world, you know, getting notoriety, awareness, credit um, are all kind of good things. Yeah. So if you look and you can, and what's nice too, is if you add an organizer and then you add other events that might be tied to that, that organizer, once you add it once, you can then just use it, right. pull it and, and then reuse it without having to enter it. Right. So it's, it's nice where it's, again, because it's custom post types or it's, it's a plugin specifically to events, it has the ability to do this relationship. So if you tried coding this yourself, yeah. or I've seen themes, older themes, where they had their own events, custom post types in there. I mean, this, this goes back to, um, you know, the flexibility of, of using a plugin or, you know, looking for themes that are flexible. So yeah. something better comes along in the future, you can swap this out and easily, you know, put something else in here. But this, this one, I've, I've seen like for 90% of what people need to do are for events. Yep. This is, this is the perfect solution for it. Absolutely. Um, so that's, so we talked about donations. So give WP highly recommended for donations, uh, events for a nonprofit, the events calendar. Um, social media, this one's a little bit tougher because I didn't really have a, a single um, plugin to recommend necessarily because they're all do different things. But, you know, just in general, why would you want, a, you know, some sort of social media capability in your, your WordPress website for nonprofit? Well, you know, you want your visitors, just we saw events a second ago, you want people to share those events, um, you know, on social media with their friends, etc. Um, and you also want people, if they do land in your website is the first place they go to, you do want to have the ability to, you know, let them follow or, you know, or like your page directly from your website. So there's a lot of different options for this. Uh, you know, whenever you do searches, the, the top favorites change all the time. I mean, 
as much as I'm not a huge fan of Jetpack, this is Jetpack works fine for this for for doing you know adding social media buttons and sharing etc. Um, social media share buttons is another free one. It works pretty well. You know you can position these buttons wherever you like. This one has a pretty large library of social media um, platforms, including some I've never heard of. But <laughs> if you need them, if you need a really esoteric one, this might be your choice. Uh, Sassy Social Share, their big thing is supposedly they're very lightweight. I've seen good reviews for them. To be honest, I, I haven't used them. Um, so I'll, I'll, when we share the slides, there's a link here for from Kinsta, which uh, you know Peter and I had mentioned in previous ones. Is a they're a hosting web hosting company, but they have really good resources about. Really recommendations. Good. So yeah. they've got a good write up of different social media plugins and they tell you the pros and cons of each. So yeah. in these days, going back to, um, you know, there's some themes that you have, like, especially, or blocks even now, where if all you need is a, a social share button, yeah, don't load a whole plugin for that. You know, your yeah. theme may have a, a, a module, like Divi has a social media module. You, know, you, you drop it on the page, you don't need a theme beyond that. So yeah, block blocks are great. You you all know that I'm a fan of the blocks, but blocks are there. There are a lot of they're making all of this so much easier. There used to be so much I thought so much overhead in some of the social media um, plugins, and now dropping a block, it's a link. It, it just kind of happens very nice and clean. And a lot of times, the block is part of a block um, package. Like I'm looking at one ultimate blocks, and there's social share for Gutenberg editor. Um, should be block editor, but that's okay. Simple, easy peasy. Well, maybe we'll build off of that list. But one last thing I want to add on here about events because we we touched upon social media as well. So this is one where you know I, you have to be aware of the the benefits of um, you know things that you put on your website versus things that you want on social media. It's not necessarily that things are either or, but events, for example, events are something that. Ideally, you want it both places if you have the time and resources to do that. So you want to put your event on your website using something like the events calendar because, you know, people may discover it through SE, you know, through searching. Um, it's something, too, that also from a historical perspective will be retained with your site. So if someone wants to go back and see what, is, what has this group done over the past six months, you can easily find that on your website. <clears throat> you know, with social media, because your news feed is full of so much stuff these days, things disappear. It's very hard to find things. But for an event, you also, best practice is you also want to create an event inside of Facebook, picking on Facebook, inside of Facebook. The reason is because first off, Facebook's algorithms are more likely to, you know, um, promote that with your, your page followers. And it's also, you can see if people are registering for your event um, and you can see other people like friends of yours who registered for the event, et cetera. So there's a whole social engagement aspect of it that, you're much better off doing that directly inside of Facebook as opposed to just, you know, copying a link from an event in your web page and just pasting it into Facebook. So Facebook always likes you to stay inside of their walled garden, but you don't have to only stay in there. You can use the event plugin as well. So that was my quick two cents on that. All right. Other, this back to you, Peter, other considerations. All right. So back to just my boring slides, but, <laughs> um, for nonprofits, there's there's a lot of really interesting things that that uh, should be considered. Um, and what I found interesting is within again often in the medium to larger nonprofits is not everybody knows that they have to know certain things. Um, so whatever awareness we can bring, even as if we're helping them out. And I was I was thinking about this uh, Ray when you're talking and 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 you know who this presentation is geared for, but we have people who have their own websites, but maybe they want to help a nonprofit, um, you know, um, a local organization or their, their church or their, you know, whatever. And, and, and all of this kind of helps because this is how we, how we can reach out. But in a larger organization, you can have multiple people or you, hey, here are communication people. They might not know those legal requirements that, you know, like sometimes I have to go, Hey, have you thought about this? Or have you talked to somebody about that? So, um, uh, disclaimer, we are not lawyers. Don't take legal advice from a WP meetup. Um, it's, it's pretty important to, to, to know that, that. But what that means is that if you are the kind of nonprofit who has to pay attention to legal issues, make sure you know what those are, who you can talk to and consult with, and, and, and just make sure that you're doing everything on, on the up and up. There are specific rules to follow. 
Um, you got to know what needs to be posted, shared. Um, in some, you know, there are things where you you go and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, but um, you know, a, a service might have a nonprofit discount, and you might be used to doing that, but depending on the type of organization, it might be certain paperwork to fill out or boxes to check or whatever. So there are, you know, uh, uh, things to, to take care of. And um, part of those legal requirements may even be just, you know, what kind of transparency needs to be. I don't think I put this on, but, you know, uh, having your annual reports posted and easy to find and uh, part of record and things like that. So kind of know what has to be there and has to be available. Um, certain grant, if you, if you're going after grants, those grants have, you're, you, you've promised something with a grant. You're, you, if you're getting money through a grant, you're getting money for a reason, you've applied for it, and there's going to be rules attached to that grant. And those rules are, you know, what you should be doing or, and then, you know, conversely, what you shouldn't be doing. Hey, that money can't be used for something else. It's used for this, because that's what the grant is all about. Um, you know, also, when you get that grant, the, the funder, the, they, they want validation in a lot of cases that that money is being used properly and all. So again, a lot of all of this communicating through your website and through your social media and all and having your hub for all, for all of this, you know, is an opportunity to kind of really reinforce the fact that that money is being used um, well. What's also important with grants is that they may have, there may be requirements in there about, um, you know, what reports do you have to communicate? What do you have to share? What do you have to make sure you're keeping track of? Is it, are you the kind of organization, and I work with one, they, they have audits that an auditor will come in and go through everything and make sure that everything's on the up and up and everything is, is being managed very, very properly because you know they're dealing with government funding um, and, and the rules that are required for that funding are, are very uh, stringent. So make sure that you're at least aware that there may be things that you have to pay attention to, uh, especially if you're an organization that uh, does receive grants. Um, privacy and security, you know, again, a lot of this is, is website uh, across, across the board, you know, having a website that, that is using um, an, an SSL certificate. Um, that means it's, you know, secure encrypted information going back and forth between the browser and the server using that HTTPS protocol. Um, if you're not if if you're not using it now, your site is coming up as insecure, unsecure. It could be insecure too. Um, you know, uh, even red banners coming up saying "Don't go to this site." And, you know, uh, you're not going to get listed in 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 uh, Google and and all of those things. But it's just best practice because, especially for if you're dealing with any kind of private information, um, having that uh, encrypted um, in, uh, information is important. Um, use payment gateways and donation services. So, you know, give what, what Ray just shared. Um, it's all about making sure that you're not doing any kind of financial thing on your website. You know, do not store uh, uh, or have somebody email you credit card information or anything like that. That's just that's uh, bad practice, you know, just don't do it. And that's why using a service that does a payment gateway where that's all being handled through that services is, is, is important uh, for so many reasons, but just be aware that that's something. Um, and then, you know, being sensitive um, to privacy issues, including names, photos, videos, we want to share the information, but, you know, are you doing stuff or can somebody be identified in a place where they don't want to be identified or do you need to do waivers? Do you have, people in our organization that are happy to share. Just there's, there's at, at the very least, be aware of it and then make sure, especially if, if you're dealing with things on a much more personal issue and, and you know, what's legal uh, uh, to share. You don't want somebody coming back saying you shared private information about me that you shouldn't have and, you know, and all the things that go along with that. Yeah, yeah, if there's pictures of children where they're part of it, you said, yeah, you usually want to be careful there. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 it can get pretty interesting pretty quickly. You know, in some cases, people are involved in it. They're, they're already signing a waiver right at the beginning saying, if you're at this event, we may take photos and videos and use it in social media. And if they sign it, you're, you're, you know, you're covered. But that's where it's like, don't take legal advice from a meetup. Um, so 
accessibility, um, very, very important. I think we're going to do a, a much, you know, maybe a meetup completely on accessibility at some point in the future, but um, it's very, very important. And it's the law, you know, making sure that a website is accessible to all users um, is part of the American with Disabilities Act ADA. Um, specific to websites is, is WCAG, they call it the uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. They're at certain levels, 2.0, 2.1, they add little specific things. And specific to grants, and if you're working, if you're a nonprofit that works with the government for the government, um, there are section, it's called Section 508. There are requirements that say, you know, you have to be compliant to accessibility laws because um, the because all government agents are supposed to be compliant to this, the section 508. So it's not, you know, if we look at the second bullet, second main bullet point here, you know, it is the right thing to do next, you know, it does it improves your site's usability for everyone. It's great for conversions, search engine optimization, you know, making your site more usable for a greater number of people um, has so many benefits. But at, at a level, it's the law, and there have been organizations that have been sued or potentially, I guess, you know, losing funding um, because they're not following those accessibility rules. So that's at one level. So if we go um, to next, so, you know, accessibility basics, you know, this is definitely an oversimplified look at what accessibility means and is, but Ultimately, it's not that complicated. And if you're using, you know, a modern, uh, good quality uh, WordPress theme, and you know, the, the the the, you just follow some best practices, and you're going to be covered for the most part. And they keep a lot of things in mind. Um, but you know, and again, all of these things that apply for accessibility apply to just good usability, good readability, you know. A, a well formatted with proper use of headings content, something that's well organized and where you're using headings not for formatting, but for document org organization. I always talk about, um, you know, one of the, the best accessibility content development uh, coach I ever had was my ninth grade English teacher, you know, where we, you learned how to write an essay and well formatted essay. That's accessibility, that using those headings and, uh, and all properly. Um, that's what, you know, you're doing, you're, you're creating an accessible document when you pay attention to how you organize. Accessibility is also, you know, uh, uh, for your eyes, my eyesight, my eyesight is terrible. You know, that's why I keep popping on my, my reading glasses and all. But having, you know, a proper contrast between text and background and those, those WCAG rules have kind of numeric values and there are tools for testing. Um, I don't think we're gonna have too much time. Maybe we can, if we have a little bit of time later, kind of do a couple of examples, but you know, that test, hey, you've got, you know, uh, I've, man, we've, the websites that have, I have uh, uh, light gray text on slightly darker gray background. A lot of us can't read that. And that's an accessibility issue. And it's a usability issue. Um, accessibility, it includes you know, navigation by keyboard, making sure that if you're hitting the tab, are your tabs going to the next uh, areas, of, to you know, the next logical place where something should be, um, where, where you should be able to go, go to, you know, can somebody see where they are? Do they have the focus? The people can't use a mouse. There are people who can temporarily not use a mouse, right? So, you know, um, in, a, in a longer accessibility discussion, it, it isn't just, you know, people think, oh, those who have uh, a vision vision uh, impairment, it's all kinds of things, including not being able to use your hands, um, uh, being injured and going, I can't use my mouse properly. Maybe I want to tab through something. All very important. Um, the correct use of the the image alt tag, that alt, that alternative text tag, it's not an SEO tool. It is a tool used to... Um, help those who can't see an image understand what that image is and that, you know, if or if it's not important to, to the document. Now, there can be an SEO benefit from it, but it's not a place to stuff keywords. It's, it's bad practice and you're not gonna get any benefit anyway, so don't do it. Um, 
the proper labeling of inputs for forms and buttons and things. That's a lot, you'll see websites kind of get dinged on that because it's, it's an easy thing to miss. But, you know, if you're using a screen reader and you're going in and it's saying, okay, this input form is where you put your name and this input form is where you put your address and all, having the code behind that. Again, if you're using a quality form plugin, you know, a lot of that could be happening without you even worrying about it. At the very least, be aware um, and there are ways of looking at it. If you are doing videos, Captioning, uh, you know, YouTube does automatic captioning. Um, the whole, the big joke is they call it craptions because they're not generally good. Um, and it's really easy if you do post uh, YouTube videos to go in there and edit edit that text. Um, and again, this all comes back to compliance to WCAG 2.0 or 2.1. It's easy to go just look that up and say, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? Um, and yeah, are you going to get sued tomorrow because you didn't do it? Um, probably not, but you can start working on this to start improving the overall experience for a greater audience uh, for you. And um, you'll see benefits kind of all the way through. We definitely have to do a deep dive into this topic because you're right there. I think there's a lot here. I think this is our, would be one of our upcoming meetup topics going into a lot. Of yeah. This. Love to spend more time on that. Um, along with, you know, the things to consider, especially for nonprofits, maybe not especially, but, you know, consider uh, if, you know, multilingual or translation of, of the of the site and, and the site content, you know, reaching more in your community, maybe your maybe your community has a higher percentage of uh, people speak a different language. It's, it, that's important. And there's a lot of ways of doing it in WordPress. Um, there's several plugins. Here's just a, a small list of some WPML, you know, just being able to there's, there's basically to, to simplify, there's basically kind of two maybe three general approaches, but let's say two, two approaches to having a multilingual site. One is to actually have the site content where you're writing that content in, in multiple languages and then the page can be pulled up and you're pulling up that custom written content. Maybe you have you know, uh, access to people can really write good content in, in a native language. Um, and that, that's, being able to show a page this language or this language or this language. Uh, the, other, the other option is to do, you know, kind of automatic translations of, of, of content. Um, the, sim <clears throat> the simplest way is there, there are like the G translate, you know, you, you, you put a little, uh, a, a little pull down, it puts a little kind of pull down list, pick a language, and then your site con content goes through the Google translate. Is it the best way? No, but it's an option um, as a way of offering that your content, um, you know, in different languages. Um, and again, you know, this idea of scalability, you know, with some of these, especially the ones, you know, with the ones where you have um, translate, it's just a matter of saying what languages, but if you're, if you're writing your own content, you might start with one other language and then add additional languages over time. So it can st uh, scale going forward, uh, going into other languages. Um, and the, my, my last slide here is kind of a, maybe crossover e even into what you're going to talk to next about, Ray, but, you know, being sensitive to the fact that um, you, nonprofits will very often have an email list, uh, a CRM, contact management system, uh, customer relationship management system. Um, to really kind of manage the whole relationship with donors and go back and when you run a campaign and you try to get more money and all those types of things. And there's a lot of ways um, to connect uh, WordPress to that. If you want to have the, the CRM within WordPress, you know, pro or con, there's a lot of good tools on it. Some people think that's not the great idea because now you're even further stretching WordPress to go beyond, you know, what it's meant to do. Um, if you have a CRM, there are a lot of ways, and it's just, you know, a few here, but a lot of ways to connect, you know, through an API code, through some interface, through Zapier, which that could be its own uh, meetup, but a way to share that data, um, anything that you're capturing on the website out to a CRM. But it's, it's again, a, a way now that you build that up, but at the very least, you're paying attention to and, you know, reference our, our previous meetup the whole concept of the value of an email list um, to reach your audience, to share your information, to follow up with people, to, you know, further reinforce. And ultimately if there's a campaign coming up, you know, to use that email list. So 
it, there's a, it, it's always an important part of uh, the nonprofit environment. Any questions on anything we've covered so far? No? Uh, no, no question, but a uh, comment, um, Mike here. Um, Mike? I, I, um, I watched the, uh, the WordPress, uh, sorry, WordCamp uh, 2020, um, WordCamp LA 2020 um, session on accessibility. And um, I just pulled out my notes. Unfortunately, I didn't make a note um, of a specific site, but there are sites that you can go to um, that can give you um, a review yeah. of accessibility of your website. Yep. Yeah, one of them is uh, Wave. Um, yeah, I knew you were facing that one. Uh, um, if it's not good, tell me. If it is, I'll. Oh, I, mean, I don't know who that is. Uh, Wave.webaim.org. So W A V E dot W E B A I M dot org is, one is, is but one of the tools. Wave dot. There you go. Okay. W E B A I M web aim. It's also stuff now built into even Chrome and spec. Too. I was going to go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this is a, this is a great, you know, let's, we, we can, you can pull a random, put in google.com and see what it says, but it's, uh, <laughs> it'll come back with, um, I imagine. So you get this kind of this feedback. So the, the three errors they, that they have are probably, they're usually, the first errors that come up are contrast or input that, um, you know, being able to label everything. But this will give you um, a lot of the information uh, on your website. Um, if you go to the inspector in Chrome and actually Firefox has become a favorite um, browser. I have not been using it enough. Um, but for use for accessibility tools and, and all where when you go to the inspector um, in in um, in Chrome it's uh, Lighthouse. Lighthouse does it, yeah. Yeah, and you can check your accessibility rules in Lighthouse, and then um, Firefox has something similar, but it really gets to a level of detail where it's telling you where you're falling short, which is which is super helpful and. It's especially helpful when you look at it and, and, and understand a lot of cases, you could take care of a number of things with kind of but one fix. Right. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a whole, with accessibility, you get into this whole discussion about uh, uh, form over function and design and all, you know, I, I'm telling you, if you've got a website where just, anybody is having a tough time reading it, it's not good design as much as, much as you think it's some sort of modern whatever, you know what I mean? It's, there, there, there's some common sense to this. Um, I like to think there's common sense to a lot of the, the, these things. And uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get the feedback that said, you're, you're not following this and it's a simple, you know, now you might have to just check and there's, there's other tools there that says, okay, what is the right contrast? And what all you have to do is change your your background image from this color to this color, now, now you're compliant. And that's, you know, a pretty easy fix. Um, we'll do, you we'll do right do that. Yeah, I think we do that session. We'll, we'll, we'll show some of those tools as well too, and maybe do a couple of live, live things with that. Let me, um, just for the sake of time, let me um, move along and then we'll, we'll, we'll have definitely some more Q&A time at the end of this too. So some other non WordPress software that may be of interest to nonprofits. Um, I'll mention a, a few. Again, this is not exhaustive. These are just some of the ones that I've either had familiarity with or um, I think would be of interest to folks. So, one of the first places to sign up for if you're a nonprofit is TechSoup. So, TechSoup is this marketplace specifically for nonprofits. Um, and it's a marketplace for free discounted software and also some discounted hardware too. So there, there are some, um, some hardware offers there. So uh, you have to be a qualified nonprofit. So there is an approval process required. It, it's not that difficult. It's a little clunky, at least when I, I did it for a, a nonprofit a couple of years ago, they, they may have improved it since. You basically have to send like a tax form, I forget what it is, but the you know, federal tax form when you're, you're first getting registered as a nonprofit. 
Um, but once you're approved, <clears throat> the nice thing is then you're opened up to all these discounts. So they're, they're major brands on there. So they have, you know, Microsoft is on there for Office 365, um, Adobe, the Adobe Cloud Suite, um, like I said, Dell for hardware, uh, Zoom, you know, Zoom is really nice. That They have, a, it's almost like 50% off their plans for nonprofits. But in addition, besides being this marketplace uh, for these discounts is they also have a ton of resources, just like I said, that give WP, a ton of free resources specific to nonprofits. So, um, you know, and webinars as well too. So training resources, like how to use this software, because there's a lot of commonality between different nonprofits of, uh, you know, Peter mentioned like CRMs, you know, so how do you, how do you have a, a donor management system, et cetera? There's a lot of stuff that you get for free just for signing up for TechSoup. So even if you have no interest in, in you know, using any of these discounts, I'd say I'd highly recommend just signing up just for the, the free training resources. Ray? Yep. This is Judith Ann. Hey, Judith. Uh, we use it for QuickBooks. Yeah, oh QuickBooks is another one. Yep. So, it's, so there's a ton there. You, you can search through, I, I don't have the time to bring it up, but yeah, browse through their, their marketplace and you can see a, a, a ton of offers there. So some really great ones and significant too. So, so the Adobe ones are, are, are quite good. So when you sign up for TechSoup, one of the things that you also, <clears throat> you can do is you can also then apply for uh, Google nonprofit. So Google has a nonprofit program where you have to be pre-approved and they somehow partner it through TechSoup. So once you're approved in TechSoup, in that list of things you can order is G Suite. So that's the Google suite of tools. The night, you know, if you think about this, you know, why would you want this as a nonprofit? You know, most people can sign up for email for free, et cetera, but you can get a full G Suite um, account. So for example, one of the nonprofits I work with you know, that allows us to create multiple email accounts. So normally on a business G Suite, you'd have to pay, you know, for a certain number of, of seats or licenses, whatever. This allows us to create multiple accounts for different like board members or people who are part of the organization. Um, you know, each one of those accounts gets their own um, Google Drive, gets all their, you know, all the, the G Suite tools. So that's, that's a great one to get for free. Um, you also, as part of applying for nonprofit, you get access to Google ad grants. I, I personally don't have experience with this. I don't know, has anyone on the call done this? I've heard some mixed things in some of the nonprofit groups I'm involved in. Some people say it's a hassle. It's not like, it's not worth it. Anyone have experience with this? Do that? No. It's worth checking well, out. <laughs> it's, one, of my, one of my organizations uses it. Do, yeah, how's the, the experience been with it? Have they have they used it or gotten good results from it? Uh, no, it's it, it, G Suite. It's the basis for all communication in the organization. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I was referring to, to, to the Google Ad Grants. So the, the part of a nonprofit, I think they give you you can. So, yeah, if you if you get the ad grants, there's a limited amount of time in which you can use them, which our organization found out through our grant. That's yeah. <laughs> But it, supposedly it's like $10,000 per month or something you get of, of ad grants. But yeah, you, it's one of those like, you know, you probably want to have a good strategy in place first of how you're going to use it before applying for it. Because you're right, you're either, you're, you're going to lose it, you're not going to get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, same thing with YouTube, there's some additional features for nonprofits that get unlocked by doing this. So it's free to apply it, just for G Suite alone. I think it's well worth it for nonprofits. Uh, some other ones, I, I won't go through these in, in great detail, but just to be aware of, some of these are through TechSoup, some of these you, you have to apply directly. Um, some tools, uh, you know, the, the difference between some of these are free and some are discounted, Canva. So we talked about social media earlier. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you can get a personal Canva account and you get access to, you know, their, their basic features of Canva. But as a nonprofit, if you qualify and they have a qualification process, you get access to their, their, their paid plan or their pro plan. So you get a, a much larger library of stock images and, and templates for social media. So if you're on a limited budget uh, as a nonprofit and you don't have graphic design resources, Canva is a, an excellent tool for that. Um, there's a lot of places, like Peter was saying, that there's some places that, I'm not sure if they still offer anymore, but that offered entirely free hosting for nonprofits. I don't know if it was, um, as a host gator or dream host at one time, one of those, one of the big ones did. I'm not sure if they still do that. 
you can still look around for discounted hosting. Even Flywheel is one that does offers discounts to nonprofits. Um, some of these other ones too, again, Gravity Forms, MailChimp, et cetera. I think the, the theme here is if you're using software to support your website, it's worth asking. You know, they may advertise it on the website directly or shoot an email to the sales department and say, hey, I'm a nonprofit. You know, can you, can you give us some kind of discount? Uh, there's a link below here. We'll share these slides afterwards where there's just a, a huge list of these, these different types of um, software discounts available to nonprofits. Real quick too. So, um, so now you got a website. <laughs> In my experience, when I, even when I volunteered, um, I found that, and this is not unique to nonprofits, but you know, sometimes a nonprofit will have their site first developed by a volunteer, for example. You know, so some volunteer came, they built the site, they launched it, now they're gone. You know, the volunteer is gone, so how do you maintain the site? You know, again, businesses have the same problem, but it seems like I've seen this more often, in my experience, in some nonprofits. So, you, you have a couple of options. You know, the first thing though is really recognize, as Peter was saying early on, you know, your website is a, a really valuable asset of your organization. I mean, that's true of businesses as, as well. So don't neglect it, you know, make sure that you protect it and maintain it. So maintenance, we've covered this a thousand times before in our other meetups, you know, patches, running security updates, all, the, all those normal things, backups, et cetera. So, you know, you want to make sure that your site is up, available, it's, it's kept up to date. Um, but in addition, as, at a certain point, you're probably going to need to do some updates to the site. So, you know, you have a couple of options. And one of these is probably different than a, a for-profit business. So you can do it yourself. You know, maybe you have people on your nonprofit organization who are technically savvy and, and can maintain the site for you. Um, you can pay people, even though you're a nonprofit, obviously you can still, you know, pay for services or you can get volunteers. Um, and each one of these obviously has its own trade-offs. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about um, the volunteer option in a second. But whoever you choose, you know, and this is true of, you know, of paid businesses as well, is, you know, use qualified people. You have oversight though. So don't, don't just completely, um, you know, give up responsibility of making sure that, you know, the person who's working on your site is doing the basics like, if you're giving admin privileges to somebody, just do it for the sake of a project and then get rid of that user, you know, inside of your, your WordPress dashboard afterwards. Don't give them unlimited access forever. Or let's say you have a volunteer who their only job is posting blog posts on your site. Give them that limited role and responsibility of author. You know, don't give them full admin role. So it's nice to have volunteers, the message here is, but it's still your responsibility to make sure that you're, you're maintaining some oversight. Um, and again, as you, most people probably know this, just because somebody's volunteering, you know, treat it as a regular, um, you know, what a donation in kind or something, you know, track the time. Some of that goes back to your stakeholders as well, too. You know, the, the value of tracking the time that someone's spending on maintaining your website is it's not free. You know, having a website may be free-ish, but main, maintenance, there's a cost to it. So at least having that uh, ability to account for, here's how much it costs our organization, because maybe you start off with having volunteers and eventually you have to pay somebody, you know, don't be shocked. You know, you want to track even the volunteers, how much time they're spending. Cause then you could at least say, here's what it would cost if we paid somebody to do this. Um, and then just a real final kind of a quick general thing is, uh, you know, this goes back to the beginning of, of knowing your goals and, and what you're trying to achieve. So make sure you have the basics like Google analytics installed. So, you know, are you, are you reaching the right audience? Um, you know, the whole discussion about desktop versus mobile, who's coming to your site and is your site optimized for them? So do the basics, you know, have Google Analytics installed there so you can really track, um, set goals too. I've, I've helped a lot of nonprofits do that, just conversion goals. You know, let's say memberships or donations, for example, you want to track that. So you want to create a, a, a goal in Google Analytics to say how many people actually did this. Again, that won't be your only goal, but you want to make sure that at least you're, you're measuring that. For volunteers, again, if you do go down the road of, of trying to find volunteers, um, as I said early on in my introduction, this is how I got involved, at least in, um, in helping out with nonprofits. I, I volunteered. So there's a lot of great sites online. Um, there's three of them I mentioned here below, Volunteer Match, 
Catch a Fire and Taproot. Um, I've worked directly with Volunteer Match and Catch a Fire. It's a really nice open marketplace, I guess you would say, for, for pairing up organizations that have a need with volunteers who have skills. Uh, and the skills, you'd be surprised if you haven't looked at these things before, the skills are pretty varied too. So let's say you just want somebody with social media skills and that's it. You can find people there who are willing to do that. Or you can find developers. I mean, that's, again, that's how I got attracted to it. Somebody was asking for um, a small project to do some WordPress development. So it's very simple to pair people up. And the nice thing is they don't have to be in the same city as you or country even, you know, you can, you can pair people up um, online virtually. I would say if you're going to go down this route, you know, with anything, just, you know, tread in slowly. So start with a small project. Um, if you're giving off, you know, you're giving admin rights to somebody who you haven't really met. I mean, these organizations do the best they can to vet their, the, the volunteers, but start small, you know, see how it goes. And then maybe afterwards you can retain that same volunteer for, for bigger projects. Um, but part of that goes also be realistic about scope, you know, as a volunteer, I did see some some people out there who basically were like, yeah, I want you to build me a, a website from scratch and I want it to look like the American Red Cross website. You know, they have these huge ambitions and you're not gonna get you know, a volunteer to, to say that they're gonna do that. Or somebody wanted something built, you know, in like a, a mobile app from scratch. I mean, most people aren't gonna have the time to, to do that. So think about your needs especially maintaining a WordPress website is something that you can easily find a, a lot of people who have those kind of skills. And, and kind of my final pitch on this too is all people who join our, our, our meetups, you probably have enough skills as a WordPress um, dabbler, expert, whatever your intermediate skills are, take a look at these sites. Um, as Peter was saying earlier on too, you know, the thing about, myself too, not just people running the nonprofits, helping out a nonprofit, I think is, is a really, you know, admirable goal. And if you're always working on for-profit projects, sometimes it's nice just to, you know, do something a little bit different. I mean, whatever your, your, um, your personal cause is, you'll definitely find a nonprofit either locally. I mean, that's the nice thing about this volunteer match too. Let's say you, you do want to help out the local, you know, whatever, you know, cat shelter down the road. I, I help out cat shelter in Massachusetts. You can search for you know that specific cause in an area near you, so there you know you'll find people very appreciative of of your skills. So whether you're a nonprofit looking for volunteers or you've got some skills to share, take a look at these these sites. They make it very simple to pair you up with with somebody. So final thought. Those are my final thoughts, at least, is um, from the 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 side of you know, somebody who helps nonprofits, hopefully we've, we've given you some ideas of either plugins or tools or software that you may not have been aware of. If you're not directly a nonprofit, if, if you're just a regular WordPress developer, think about spending a little bit of time. You don't have to spend, you know, 40 hours a week on this, but just even a couple of hours, you know, the basics of helping out a nonprofit with maintaining their plugins, doing, doing the basic things like that, you'll, you'll definitely contribute a lot. Peter, I don't know if you have any final wrap up thoughts. No, just to uh, tag on that, you know, the WordPress community is a giving community um, itself. So it just, you know, there, it, there's a good match and there's, there's, you know, contributing in any way that you can, um, I think is, is, is valuable. And there are certainly a lot of avenues and when you need the help, there are people that, that are willing to help. Well said. Great. All right. Well, let me stop the presentation. I wasn't checking the chat window, unfortunately, because I was, I was flipping through slides. Yeah. <laughs> we have any questions in the chat window? Uh, PayPal. Somebody mentioned about pay. We didn't touch upon um, payment processors necessarily. That's another one, too. I haven't gone through that whole process either, but I know there are even discounted rates for nonprofits. Have, have any folks here either working on nonprofits? Have you gone through the process of getting, I forget what the PayPal is normally, like, what is it, two point? five or whatever the percentage yeah. is, you can get a lower percentage of that as a nonprofit. Yeah, my experience, I mean, the, I, I dropped a quick note. I mean, one thing is um, you, you just have to be, you, you, you have to be careful with them, like any of them. You have to, whatever you're, you're, you're filling out and approving, and then there's follow-up, because I know one very small, it was a fundraiser nonprofit, and it was put in probably in a way that it shouldn't, and, 
he's never been able to recoup the money. It was only, it wasn't a lot, but because it was like, oh, you didn't prove something that you said you were. And it's like, yeah, in the meantime, there's money sitting in an account that we haven't, you know, it's long been forgotten more than anything. It's only came to mind now and it's not a huge amount of money, but you, you just have to, you, you, that's, I think the one challenge in any nonprofit probably experiences is you just have to know what those rules are and make sure you're, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and filling out the forms and have everything on record. Eric had a good comment too about do not buy a list. Eric, if you're still on, talk about that a little bit too. I assume you mean like buying a list that from a, um, just yeah, from so um, I, I have been to a few, a few events of late um, with, uh, with one person in particular that bought a list with 10,000 names on it uploaded it to um, mail service of your choice. In his case, it was MailChimp. Oh. And, and the question that arose was, why did MailChimp kick me off of their service and tell me not to come back? It's right it's, there it's, when you do the upload. Yeah, it's right when you do the import. They ask yeah. you, you have to have the permission. That's, that's yeah, so ca uh, cans, uh, again, um, I don't, um, I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one in real life. Um, can, uh, can spam. Um, is a is a major issue with um, with email marketing, and lately with uh, CCPA CPRA, I think is a new one that just passed, um, and GDPR. It, it's a real touchy situation that if you don't specifically have permission to use that address, yeah, you just don't. Yep. And even from a nonprofit standpoint, you, you think about like from a donor standpoint, you want donors who will read your newsletters. You want people who are engaged and it's the, you know, you don't want to just, like I said, you don't want to spam people because that, that, that not just sends a, it doesn't drive people away from unsubscribing. That just sends a bad message around your organization. It's like, are you really that kind of a, an organization? So that's yeah, a great point. Yeah. You, you need to, you need to treat your email list and your domain you know, like the, the, the precious gold that it is and to be, you know, to do these types of things that put you at risk, you'll get kicked up. You, your domain will get blacklisted and then you can't do a whole heck of a lot. You know, getting, getting a domain pulled off of blacklists is, is a pain. Um, you know, it's its own kind. It's like, Oh, I got a virus. It's its own kind of thing. It's a self-imposed, you know, virus in, in effect. And that all of a sudden your emails aren't getting delivered through, even your personal email to somebody because your domain has been blacklisted. So yeah, bad practice. Don't do it. And Eric, you also had the other comment in, in the chat too about um, registering with PayPal as, as a nonprofit. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, so um, PayPal, um, PayPal will give you a donate, um, a discount if you register as a nonprofit, but I've seen people that they put, they just, they go down, download a plugin. And the plugin says, well, you can put whatever words you want on the button. And they say, and the person just puts in donate, um, kind of like a buy me a coffee type of thing, donate, and PayPal sees them taking a donation and they no longer have a PayPal account. Yeah, yeah. donations are tracked as different transaction types on, on PayPal side versus purchases. I, I, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, the, with the payment gateways, you know, I found it was interesting. I supported a, um, we're, we're past the election, but a uh, political site, you know, to, to get donations. And there were some, one of them you wouldn't even, because of Connecticut, Connecticut specific. So you have to look at law, didn't even allow, that site would not allow somebody from Connecticut because of some very specific thing about, you know, um, how the monies would be used in campaign donations and things like that. But then there were there are plenty of others that, that, that did. Um, in fact, we used Anadot, you, you give, but Anadot is a, um, one of the payment gateways that uh, we found relatively easy to use. Um, and it can be used for nonprofits. Stripe has a nonprofit capability. Um, so there's a lot of ways of, of, of taking those do donations online, but um, make sure you follow the rules. 
Does anyone on here, one thing I, I think I mentioned, like in terms of plugins and other software, I don't have a lot of experience with that. I've never been involved in that part of it, but like donor management systems. So like, you know, a, kind of a, a contact management system or CRM, I should say that's specific to donors. Does anyone on here have any experience with that for nonprofits? No. Yeah, because that's another one too, where there's some out there, um, one group I worked with was using, I think it's Wild Africa is what it was called. Um, but that's one where, you know, because I think that this nonprofit's model was you subscribe to their organization on a, a yearly basis. And then this Wild Apricot thing would let them manage their membership, you know, cancel it, get receipts and all that. And then when the, the membership came up for renewal every year, Wild Apricot would send it out and, you know, do the auto, auto renewal. You can choose that as an option too. So it seemed neat. I just, I didn't yeah. have any experience with that. I don't know if any other folks did or not. Uh, no, but you know, it's a good point. I know that people do use membership plugins and, and recurring payments and some of the donation uh, gateways do have that option for recurring payment. Um, so, you know, like everything that in with WordPress is there's multiple ways to achieve similar um, goals, but yeah, you know, this, this idea of, of, of making something be, um, happen over time. I know a lot of people, you know, they're using their systems more for like kind of that next mail, you know, whether it, it might be just, you know, that again, that the email and whatever that campaign is. Um, it's probably uh, a, a lot of the, the, the smaller, they just, they're, they're not thinking about that the, the, the CRM aspect, you know, that customer relationship management as much as maybe they could or should. And there are also, you know, HubSpot, has got a free tool out there. And I just noticed, you know, we were looking at what you have discount. It looks like Salesforce has a nonprofit. I think so. Yeah. The thing I find with CRMs in general, at least my brief experience with sometimes it's overkill. <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree hundred percent. Yeah. 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 You'll need, you'll need one person to just focus on yeah. all Maybe of that. But yeah. Any other suggestions for folks who either have like, um, either if you're actively working with a nonprofit or any plugins or things we missed that, that you've seen that might be of interest to share. And I think we covered the big ones, right? The, you know, donations, events, some of the other things we, we didn't spend time talking about forms because that's just kind of common regardless of what type of, of website you have. Um, I can't really think of anything else really different for- you know, Sometimes surveys are, are a tool that gets used by nonprofits, right? You know, kind of get the feedback from your, you know, from your, audience, you know, whoever meant. So Survey Monkey and yeah. or I don't know. I, I bought a lifetime deal on one of the forms thing that I've, I've never <laughs> used since. So. Kind of, yeah. I end up using Google Forms just it's yeah. simpler to get stuff in and out of too. Yeah. Well tell you what, if we don't have I don't see any other things coming in through the chat. So thank you again everyone for joining us. As I said, we'll be posting a recording of this um, to our YouTube channel. We'll also put the slides up on our Facebook page. And I'll send out an uh, uh, email announcement tomorrow with links to everything. So thanks again. And as I said, if you have other topics folks are interested in, I, I, I'm going to save the chat here. Some suggestions were in the chat. But any other thing, feel free to reach out to Peter or myself. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys again next month. So take care, everyone. Have a thanks, good night. Thanks all. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.